you look back, and you do not see Harden anywhere. There's nowhere to be found. Okay. So here's the thing. We just go in and we say, hey, we're looking for Solus. And then if Harden never shows up, we get out of here when we can. We're free. <laughs> I, I think we were tasked, but uh, I do believe Harden was supposed to assist us in this task. Well, Harden's not here. Yeah, what he's a, got a nail sticking out of him, and I was winged by one, and... Uh, <coughs> well... So now we're going to be picking a fight with with these guards, and maybe even Lord Chauncey himself? I mean, you... Haven't you heard what they've I'm, said about it? I'm, I'm in a bad way here. I, I, I'm in no condition to find anyone. Maybe, uh, maybe we step away from the gate. I can't see anything out there to find Harden, anyways. Heard you heard what they said about Lord Ch- Chauncey. But, uh, oh, I mean, maybe. Uh, uh, what are you talking about? He used to say, "I can handle four. Life's pushing it." Well, I've heard about the Reddings. There's hundreds of them. Well, we're not four. <laughs> we were four. He's probably not got four. family who knows where com- would be coming after him. Us, if we took him out, uh, as far as I, I can say. I have no so, quarrel with the man. So unless they've already heard us, as uh, I point up towards where the guards would stay above the gate. You all look up at this, and you can see what clearly would be be the murder room. Like, you realize as you look up, there are kind of these slats in the wood, and this is like where they pour boiling oil down. In fact, when you look upon the ground, the cobblestone where the snow is kind of blown in beneath the portcullis and along the inside walls, there's black tar that's kind of arrested in between the stones over some number of years when this place is besieged. You see this long tunnel that basically extends deeper into Chateau, the Chateau Kill and opens into a courtyard beyond. But as you look through, all you can see is snow falling down. Well, uh... Should we go in? Some things amiss here, too, I, I gather. No one just leaves a port polis like this. They want to keep their castle safe. I, I mean, but... What are three people gonna gonna do against this? <laughs> I don't I don't I don't think they were too worried about uh, armies crawling yeah. foot under a portcullis. I'm sure the guards just saw us running up and knew what we were running from. Well, I mean, if maybe there are guards, maybe they're under siege. Maybe that explains why the people aren't. Uh... Whoever was chasing us could come in just the same as we did. Let's get out of here. Well, we can. Don't think Harden's gonna join us, so okay. uh, maybe. Let's just go and, and talk to the guards. Do we know there's guards? Or at least lower the portcullis. Well, that would be in the guard room, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. You cross through the um, you cross through the this long tunnel between these two stone towers beneath this long wooden bridge you have a fixed above it where the guards would go from tower to tower and you step into the courtyard and you realize that it's littered with half frozen corpses of peasants and soldiers butchered without pause they must have been dead for weeks that's oh, strange and ominous there's the wolves Something is prowling the grounds. It, uh... You can hear a call out as you step broadly into the courtyard. Seems to me we found your guards. Is there black arrows around? No. Oh, Freddy's his blunderbuss and takes a look around. Beneath foot and boot, you can see there are less than a full dozen corpses lying down on the ground, frozen in fear. Every weapon has been stripped from their corpses, but they still wear their quilted armor. 
they all seem to wear the livery of a tree, a leafless tree, with a, with a braying mule in front of it. The symbol of Lord Chauncey Redding. You can see resting up on nearby parapets are a, are a series of black ravens, crows, that have been picking at the dead days, perhaps for weeks. But one among them stands out. One of them is unlike the other. One of them is not wearing any armor or clothes whatsoever. It looks like a bluish purple person arrested within a, a snowdrift near the walls. Where you can see, although Chateau Kildon stretches above you, the courtyard surrounds it and is encapsulated within these tall, soaring stone walls. In a nearby snowdrift, you can see someone there. That, uh, that seems strange. I'll walk up and take a look at this person. Body, I should say. Well, clearly the corpse has been is frozen and has been moldering for quite some time, but most unusual, or unusually, is painted head to toe in purple blue woad. Paint from head to toe. Completely naked? Naked indeed. A vicious sword ball left likely led to his doom. Uh, as you can see, that there's blood kind of spattered up on the stone wall and frozen kind of where it, uh, where it can be in the dribble. Most curiously, however, the corpse's eyes are stitched shut. And arrested in its hand is this cruel, long, shining shillelagh. What's that you got? Club. Something tells me we've been sent to die. Maybe it's just paranoia or something, but everything's going south. I don't feel safe here. Oh, I'd say not. Bartlesby is going to pick up the shillelagh. It appears to almost be arrested, mummified within its hand as you must kind of twist it back and forth until you finally free it. As you pull it forth from the corpse's hand, a murder of crows take off into the air, a black blanket of feathers and cawing as they leave toward the sunlight. No snow falls, just wind that whips up the uh, snowdrifts here and there. The wind is not wicked, but uh, fortunately the guard towers block the bright, shining view of the of the, of, the, of the white light coming from the sun beyond it, almost kind of crowning it in a golden halo. So it makes it easy to see in here. But the sound of the wolves somewhere in the mountains can still be heard. You now have a uh, pilgrim staff. They have an incredibly sturdy wood. Made of ironwood. kind of beats it against his other hand. Well, uh, because it has the maker's mark quality, it also gets plus 5% to strike. Well, I can't, I can't say I uh, know who these people are, but uh, taste of weapons is uh, not too bad. So what happened to all these other people? Uh, are are they were they dispatched by means of violence as well? Like, well, as you observe the the bodies that are here, it doesn't appear that they harbor any sort of wounds. They just seem frozen in the snow, arrested and left to exposure. Purple lips, bruised fingertips, extremities turn gray frostbite. But scampering all around them, amid their clothes, beneath their coif, and underneath the quilted armor, are these tiny purple sapphire spiders crawling everywhere. Thought I didn't trust those things. 
can't die from a spider, you said. Who says a spider killed him? They look like they froze. I don't know about that. Well, it's either that or these spiders certainly like corpses. And they thought I was about to be one. I just don't trust it. Bugs all over. So, yeah, uh, Would you say we... turn about and you can see that there's a large wooden stable not far from here made of thick wood different than the rest of Chateau Kilnum that is fashioned from stone but sturdy no less it will withstand wind and the test of time adjacent to that the great tall soaring doors of Chateau Kilnum terminating at a point about nine feet a set of double doors, in fact, along a broad set of stone stairs that are swept with snow everywhere along the banquets. Okay, well, someone's here, I think. Of course, we'll stay here long with all these bodies. Well, the horse wouldn't survive long because these bodies have to be fed, right? Horse can't crawl out underneath a portcullis. Right. But it'd probably be dead if there wasn't someone to take care of it. I would have would have frozen. Right. No food in the middle of winter any. So with Arvin gone. If we can figure out how to open this gate. If there's one horse, hopefully there's more. Let's take a look. We can get out of here. Your eyes quickly scan the battlements where the walls that join the towers, and you realize that the only way to those towers is either through the stables, through Chateau Kilden, or with a rope and grapple. As you can see, pathways, walkways along the exterior walls, but you cannot see how to get up there unless you were to make ingress in one of those two ways. The three ways are there. So you want to get to the stable first? Is that yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Well, you come to the, the stables, and uh, the first thing that you discover uh, as you walk in is, is this very large, so easily, easily housed at least up to 10 horse. In fact, you know here in the north, particularly uh, the Dunnish breed, a very powerful breed of horse called a storm horse similar to the one that Baron Harper Clavager had. And without a doubt, the size of these stables would indicate that probably the height of them would indicate that storm horses would be kept in here. Storm horses are so incredibly temperamental, they can't, they can't actually view other horses around unless they get fierce and angry. So you find that the stable, the stall doors are very, very tall. There's this gray withering hay everywhere and there's this heavy temper crisscrossing above your head inside the stable where you can hear the faint uh, wickering of a horse, perhaps asking for food. Nearby, there is a barrel full of crab apples. There are sacks of oats. Okay. Anything possibly edible for a human? You scrounge about and you find nothing that would be immediately edible. Um, you could certainly eat oats uh, if you were to cook them and soak them in the water, or if you had horse's teeth. Um, hmm. That's my distinguishing mark. Um, <laughs> that's right. You are carrying Bradshaw. <laughs> I'm not saying she looks like a horse, but yeah. Uh, so, no less. Um, nothing edible in here. You find brushes, things you would expect to find in a stable, a pitchfork, food, a scoop, a shovel, oils, leather, Any horseshoes. Oil pot. Little bits of oil. I take the scoops, some bit nails, scoop some oats, and bring it over towards the horse. Okay. The horse is behind the stall. Are you gonna open the stall? You can't do. You need both hands to open it. These stall doors are very, very tall. Oh, can I open like the top part? No. It's not one of those with the two. It is not. Okay. It's a door that would slide on casters, apparently. So 
So I can't see what's behind the door, but I can tell there's a horse there. Oh, yes, well, without a doubt. You can hear it clomping inside. Okay. Heavy it's, clomping, it's in fact. It's a stable door, like the front door, but closed. Yeah, that's right. Okay, it's, clo- it's, closed off, it's closed off the stall. There's ten stalls okay. somewhere, too. I just don't want if the horse getting out to, like, bolt out of the stable. Oh, you wouldn't imagine, no. Okay, so I'll, I'll set the, the thing of oats down and open the door. Okay. Kind of rolls along these casters at this point. And there is this... Inside, you see this very wan, tall horse. A very tall horse, in fact. Uh, that it's clearly a storm horse. And it seems to be kind of nudging its nuzzle toward you, trying to reach for the grains. In fact, you can see the that its bridle, or sorry, its bit has been, it's been attached to a rope so it wouldn't escape, mm-hmm. obviously, if you open the door. Okay. Not uncommon. I'll bring the oats over to it to feed it. Okay. You bring the oats over to feed it, and it kind of begins to kind of slowly clomp forward, and it takes just a few steps, and then suddenly collapses up on the ground. And as it coll- as are you all inside here? Just out of curiosity. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not in the stall. You're not. A, you're not in the stables at all. I'm in the stables, not in the stall. Well, they're not in the stall either. They're in the stables. Okay. So the yeah. question is, are you nearby? Are you watching this? What are you doing? Better question is, what are you doing, first off? Uh, I would probably be nervous about something coming in behind us since somebody's here. And um, I would be, you know, I'd, I'd have the blunderbuss pointed towards the door, but... So you're watching outside for danger? Yeah. Okay, what about yourself, Bartlesby? Uh, Bartlesby would kind of be doing the same thing, but also stalking down the lanes a little bit just to make sure no, there's nothing else that appears in the stalls or no so. one else looking in the other stalls? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Okay. Kind of scouting. The horse unfortunately collapses. It is, it is far too weak to reach toward the scoop of oats. Okay. Um, it appears it hasn't eaten for weeks. All right, I'll bring the oats to its it muzzle. Okay. You grab the oats and come to its muzzle, and you extend your hand out, and there's this kind of wet, thin film of where its tongue begins to slowly chomp the oats from your gift. It takes to it easily. On the floor, why I rub his neck. A smooth paint, this horse. Tall and powerful and muscled. But starving. I set the oats down so I can have easy access to it. It quickly eats them, voraciously eats them. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Roll a handle animal test. This test will be routine. Okay. Uh, that's gonna be fifty flip and fail. Uh, that's a failure. Okay. You're not really sure what the horse is saying, but it seems to be pulling taut on the rope as it continues. Kind of a cold, almost like a rattling sound in its throat, like it has a cold. Or is sick. Is there any? It's too cold for water around here, so I. Is there like a pump around here, or probably anything? outside? Okay. Well, this horse is in no condition to go anywhere. He's hasn't eaten in who knows how long. Oh. Nope. Two nope. week, two weeks to travel. Unfortunately. Trying to give him some comfort, but uh, it's really not our place here. We need to... Barl's maybe you're searching other stalls, right? Yeah. Okay. So at this point, you, at this point, Partha, you are at the doorway, kind of looking back and looking outside to ensure nobody's coming across the frozen courtyard. In the case of, uh, in the, in the case of Ulf, you're trying to help the horse recover. But as you open one of the stall doors, you discover that among this withering gray straw. There are these tiny purple spiders crawling everywhere. Uh, no. Can't get away from you. <sighs> More spiders? Yes. Everywhere. Uh, uh, there's there's some in the, the wonder. They seem to uh, they seem to like bodies. I uh, wonder if there's something in here. I'm just gonna go get some like 
shovel, rake, whatever, and kind of... Pitchfork. Yeah, just kind of dig a little Root bit around the straw. There, okay, you, just to see if there's anything in there. slowly begin rooting around, and you find that the corpse of some small dead animal. Oh, yes, there was. Something's dead over here. Don't know what. Not a philosophy. Son of philosophy. <laughs> well, you don't need one to be able to tell what everything is, just to tell what an insect and a spider is. Apparently. But uh, this appears to have been dead for a bit. And uh, dead looks dead. Unless, uh, you want to take a, a gander and go keep moving. Yeah, um, I'll uh, take a look, but we'll just keep an eye out while you're out there and make sure that nothing sneaks up on us. Well, of course. We'll do two of us step out in the courtyard then and kind of watch, or at least in the stable. And yeah. Watch. What about okay. yourself? She said, take a look at the animal, so I'm going to take a look at the animal and see what it is. Okay. Dead skunk. Somehow wandered up here. You got to go pump water or you want to Yeah. Like Your eyes said, <laughs> pumping the uh, water pump. Bartlesby is out in the courtyard just kind of watching. And that's when you notice something above Chateau Kilden. You can see that the, the chateau raises about two stories up. And you realize that the sh all the land is like just a slight tick to the left. Like you're not walking on even ground. In fact, it looks like even parts of the chateau are slipping. Like the place looks like it's not decrepit or threatening to collapse, but it kind of leans very distinctly, almost as if it's about to fall off the ledge into the lake down below. <laughs> Everything is off, in fact. The, you can see where the brick is or the, the rock and the mortar has busted in places. All the wood is slightly stressed and splintered as well, including the heavy timber inside the, the stable. It all kind of comes into focus. And when you're kind of looking toward the, the top of the Chateau Bartlesby, that's when you notice there's this huge stained glass window shaped like a, like a, like a, like a sun. Uh, that would allow light in from the east to illuminate probably the interior of the chateau uh, in broad daylight. And in fact, you can see light coming over the top of the over the top of the gatehouse behind you, in illuminating the uh, the uh, stained glass is very very beautiful. But you realize that it's actually busted in one part, and there's somebody halfway in and halfway out. The chateau. Like a body? Yes. Oh. You can see the glint of armor up on her shoulders, and her face is black and blue and blistered from explosion exposure. Her arms and body are hanging out like this. So she's trying to get out. Or like ex exiting or, or entering. You can see that there's stained glass actually jutting through one of her arms where it's twisted over. So like she was thrown through it or something. Uh, Elf, what do you, uh, what do you make of that? You hear this. <laughs> the sound of the portcullis rattling against the wind. Not that, no, I was, I was talking about the window. That, I think that was just wind. But, uh, up, up at the window. She looks like she's headed out or headed in. Can't ask her. <laughs> I mean, which headed out, of course, because people don't fly. <laughs> <laughs> you can see bits of broken glass actually in the snow where yeah. you're all standing. You feel you hear it softly crunch or break beneath your foot. I think uh, I think she was uh, thrown out. Not quite all the way. But, uh, a bit, a bit. You can imagine in your head. This is where Hardin would say defenestration. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, that's interesting. Means uh, means the courtyard wasn't the only place it appears there was a bit of a skirmish. Right, that's, yes. You know how the Undertaker would uh, give off a, a certificate to the family? He'd actually be able to check that, that box it talks about. Which one's that? Oh, I've seen a lot of those certificates. It's never, never checked in when I turn them in, but uh, it's sudden defenestration or something like that. They have a checkbox for that. They do. It happens often enough that they put it. Huh. Well. Yes. Yeah. That that would 
Yep, yep. So, that animal, by the way, it's a good thing it's dead. It'd be the worst thing that could happen to us, because then we could be tracked forever if it's a skunk. Mm. Oh, well. Right then, um, but, uh, well, we found a horse we can't ride out. A person through a window. Twelve corpses on the ground, not collected whatsoever. Did I, if I got any water from the pump, I'd yeah. take it to the horse. Yeah, you did. I don't, uh, the don't horse rightly know what we do now. Kind of urging against the rope. Like, can't, I pull trying, the water up trying, to it. He's trying to get out of the stall. Yeah, I can tell that. I'm just trying to see if it needs any water. Oh, yeah, so it laps it hungrily. In fact, it laps so eagerly, you actually drop the bucket and the water spills across the ground. Oh, no. All right, well, I guess I will undo the horse. Horses rain. <clears throat> rain. <clears throat> so walking over to the water pump? Yeah. You all can see this happening at this point. The horse is really struggling to, to walk. Clearly it's been hurt. You can see it kind of limping up on its hind leg and I'm holding it up. And when it comes out into the courtyard, suddenly it goes thwomp as it collapses up on the cobblestone ground. Oh. And as this happens, you can see its belly spill forth, its guts just opening from a, from a sore, a wound, like a black and yellow wound along its belly. An exposed wound you did not see, and amid it, you can see these tiny purple spiders crawling everywhere. <laughs> All of you need to make a routine resolve test. Hey. <laughs> First success in a while. <laughs> First success in a while. Oh. <laughs> you uh, gain there. three corruption, Ulf, and you, uh, oh my gosh, ten <laughs> mental peril from stress. <laughs> Spiders don't kill people. That's what he said. They can Spiders work. don't kill. You can feel the hackles on the back of your neck kind of stand up on end, and it's <laughs> not from the goose pimples you're getting from the wind. They kill horses. That's it. They kill horses. What you say? Uh, don't trust that. Poor beast. I don't trust. Well, um, it, it would appear our mode of transport we planned is not going to work. Oh, that would not work for days. No, we don't have days. No. At least no, he got uh, a, some small comfort before he passed. Well, if we can find some. Yes. We, we found some water. <laughs> Oh, we the horse is still gasping for air. Uh, I, I'll take my... <laughs> it's it's clomping up on the cobblestone trying to stand back up, clearly still alive. Uh, I, I'm gonna take my fire hardened spear and put it out of its misery so that... <laughs> Bartlesby goes to do it and sees you do it and stands back. <laughs> the skin is soft. The its hide does not seem to uh, get, or does not seem to uh, give much as you puncture the puncture its throat, and this hot spray of blood steaming on the ground. <laughs> the horse expires as all of its life's blood begins to spill out across this the cold cobblestone. You can see the heat coming off of it, so cold as it is. With the light. Like a great halo, a crown of light over the twin uh, gate, the twin gatehouse uh, towers, and the hot blood, and all of Chateau Kilden in the shadow of the mountain. The devil didn't deserve a death like this. Do I know any rumors, stories I was told of as a child? Any really folklore, like that it speaks of like spiders or? I seem to recall you failed a folklore test earlier regarding this, so no. Okay. You. <laughs> nothing. Rumors? No. <laughs> no. Nothing really comes to you, unfortunately. That's right. Well, um... After all, you did spend your time, well, you probably spent a lot of your time in a tavern as a local bouncer, and... 
Sure, you had to get nasty with people sometimes. You certainly never killed anyone. Yeah, drunk people tell stories. That's right. But unfortunately, you were probably at the bottom of your cups when these people were telling their stories, and you never counted any of them. Well. Because you failed your test earlier. Mm-hmm. Explains the tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, so, uh... I'm gonna ask my brother or somebody, uh, you know? <laughs> so, a man team. named Taco. <laughs> Isn't it Parasemi? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, uh, well, seems to me the stables was a bust. Uh, against my better judgment, I guess we'll try at the chateau. <laughs> well, I mean, if you have a better idea, let's hear it, because I don't want to go in there. There's nowhere else to go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's a guard tower we didn't I'm certainly on. not going outside, are you? Back the way we came? You know, that almost seems better, but no. No. Uh, certain death? Hmm. Well, I'd rather have certain death by an arrow than... You hear a snowdrift kind of break free of a nearby wall and fall into the... Guard. Okay. Yeah. Fine. It, uh, seems nature has plans for us. <laughs> but I like them. The, cur- the court guard is, is big enough to accompany several folk up on horseback and easily could stable ten soldiers, ten, ten storms, storm horses, and you could certainly leash several up outside. It is a large, sprawling courtyard that uh, all the walls seem to terminate toward where Chateau Kilden is. Tall and gray and, sto- and soaring. The doors are affixed shut. Well, the front door doesn't necessarily seem an option. Should we, uh, sure there's a servant or something. Should we look for that? Not sure if we can't go in there. Does it seem like there's it's locked or is there like is it barred? You grab the rung and it seems to budge a little bit, certainly. Is there like a gap between the two doors if that I can see it. through? If you open it. Okay. But I can't. This is it. a this is a chateau meant to withstand siege. Mm-hmm. Now it's not to say that uh, there is a gaps in places, but you have to open the doors first. Okay. I was just trying to see if I could like peer through uh-huh. or something like that. If you open the door slightly, you can. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Ugh! You pull on it. It's kind of you realize as you kind of look up that the archway is splintered in such a way that one of the this door is is affixed in place. The other door is not, though. Oh, okay. I'll try the other door, then. Okay. It groans heavily as you open it, and you peer inside, but you have no light, and there's no light in the inside either, within either. So the stained glass is not exposed on this level, at least. You know that. I do. But you can hear this dripping sound coming from somewhere within. I'll try to push the door open further and see, like, just to get some daylight inside. Okay. The, uh, doors, uh, do not push open. They, they open outward. Oh, I'll pull it. I'll pull it open. Okay. And the door kind of slides across the stone, scraping against it, and it brushes away a snowbank on the other side. And as light begins to pour in, there's this pillar that captures all the light as it comes within this tall, soaring central pillar that uh, seems to cast the light within here everywhere. And you can see the flooring of this place is broken in places. Busted. What kind of flooring is it? It's made of flagstone. Old, old, old it is. So answer me this. How long do you think it's been since anybody was in here? It's a good question. I think it's quite deserted at the moment. Uh, you think maybe the Baron Clavija had been holding on to that uh, plow yourself letter for quite some time, eh? 
Little do we know it is even from him. Oh, that's a good idea. I mean, it doesn't look like there's anyone here. Well, hopefully. Actually, it does look like there's someone here. <laughs> They're just not writing letters. Yeah. Hopefully we can find Lord Chauncey cold in his bed and we just need to take a head and we can get out of here. Well, as much as I like that idea, uh, finding a way back out of here. Those archers, I, I don't know what they are. Those things out front. It's going to be difficult, even with a head. I say we wait here. For what? Leave tomorrow. Leave Leo under cover of night. It's the only way out of here. Well, we got uh, no supplies. Yes. No light. Well, maybe we can find some. Could be some in here, but that's 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 what I think we should do. I mean, we can look. Uh, I don't know about you. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a bit uh, parched and. Food parch. I don't know the word for food parch. What? Uh, hungry. You imagine so Harden would say hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I can almost hear him. <laughs> well, if, you need, if you need some water, we can go back out to the uh, pump outside the stables. Yes. Uh, but food, food is, uh, I think, going to be our biggest problem. We can find some wood and some form of uh, pot. We can oats. get those oats and we can cook them up. It's not make, make a porridge. Yeah, it's not a good, great meal. Well, um, it'll work. You hear this from in from outside in the courtyard, and you see that, and you hear this, the sound of rope tearing through the air, and suddenly, clud! The entire portcullis drops, mm -hmm. and all the ice is affixed to it, shudders and breaks off of it. And as you're looking that direction, as the sun breaks over the top of the towers, you're blinded by the light, looking back toward it, and you can see these kind of dark shapes walking toward you in the courtyard. In we go! <laughs> Bartlesby starts like, trying to usher people to go inside. Uh, duck inside? Yeah. Yeah, you quickly come inside, and with a solid thud, you shut the doors. I look for a bar or something. You find a heavy bit of wood. You lift it and bar the door. Yep. Seems to me our uh, decision was made. Mm -hmm. So, in we go. It's dark in here. It's so dark you can't see anything. It's pitch black. Pull the torch that I've got. The partially used one. Okay. Spark it. Flick. The torch begins to illuminate the interior of this opening chamber. Put the shillelagh in the other hand. The light of this grand central pillar seems to almost be absorbing the light as it reflects and refracts off of it. This tall, soaring pillar that's clearly meant to show off the endless source of wealth of House Kilden, whoever was here before the Lord Chauncey. The pillar is a marvel of the modern age, grandiose and gilded with flowers and children and all manner of beasts that all seem to be reaching toward a woman who is doubtlessly the martyr. It stretches from the base of Chateau Kilden to the highest peak of the roofs overhead, supporting a second story. On either side, you can see these set of stairs. One has collapsed as heavy bit of timber has dropped and broke through the stairs. The other one continues to ascend up and twist its way toward the second story. Look for a place that might have a hearth and some wood next to it. It's uh, a okay. kitchen. Most likely a kitchen would be on the first floor. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Let's look for the kitchens. Maybe maybe there's even some food in there, because going to get the oats is... <laughs> uh, not the best idea. I, I, I'm thinking. Yes, uh, uh, look for a dining room. A kitchen would normally be near, right? I don't think this had uh, outside kitchens. 
Hmm. So I guess we'll start to explore the first floor. Okay. You begin to look around the ground floor. Most of the hallways have been have collapsed. In fact, most of the ground floor, any other adjoining chambers have been blocked by crumbling stone or bits of timber that have fallen down. This place looks like it's complete disarray. In fact, there's a lot of dust still kind of lingering in the air. There's no other way to save for the second floor. The whole place is leaking. Like snow has been leaking through the walls. So it's just a room with two staircases exiting it. That's right, the adjoining hallways have collapsed. You cannot imagine in any stretch of the imagination why someone would want Chateau Gilden. <laughs> I uh, guess the stairs is it. Mm-hmm. Well. It's almost certain that uh, Lord Redding is not here. This place is a dump. He obviously wasn't uh, feeding. Feeding a horse didn't have. Something horrible has happened here. Perhaps whatever made this place lean off kilter. I think that they were on the siege. That's why all those people were outside with no wounds on them. They were starved out. I mean, they just all congregated in the courtyard to pass out and die. Would you rather freeze to death or starve to death? Well, I don't guess as I've ever thought of it. You get so cold you just go to sleep. I think they all stepped outside to have a sleep then. That's better than starving. But let's look anyway. Uh, Alright, there was the blue man out there. I don't know. You can see the tiniest of small sapphire spires scrambling between crevasses as you bring light toward them. And you realize as one is still somewhat intact and perhaps with your own curiosity, you squish it between your fingers, Ulf, and you realize the moisture on their back causes the light from the abdomen seem to reflect a bluish purple light. Very curious, these spires. Do they seem to have a fear of, like, us? Heat. Heat, they And seem light. To... When you bring heat and light near them, they scramble away very quickly. But us, they don't seem to care. It's only when there's, like, a torch. Why would an insect care? Why would a spider care? Well, it. They, when... don't, they don't seem to scramble away from you. They seem to scramble away from light. Okay. They're just vibrations or something like send them away. Okay. Well, uh, more of these things. Must be millions. It's a number, right? Milli- million. That's a lot. That's a lot. I don't know. I think. I've heard that word before. You find a half-dinted helmet at the foot of the stairs. You can imagine it a bounce down these stairs at one point. stairs, your mind kind of wanders for a moment. There are no corpses to be found. Just an old dented helmet. This, uh, whatever belonged to the lady in the window. Let's go see. I'm getting, yes. I'm getting to Nancy. By all means. sound of people outside trying to open the doors as the brace is holding them in place. Maybe a bit faster. You think maybe we could talk to them? I don't think they're arrows. We're really listening to our reasoning. Well, no, we can just own it. You want this castle? You can have it. Just let us go. 
hurt to try. Let's say something. I mean, it could hurt to try, just to be honest. What is it? What did he want? The sounds stop. The people outside stop trying to open the doors. I'll say something. There is no response. Well. Speak if you know any other languages. I don't know, maybe they don't understand. Oh, I'm from the north. It took me a while to learn it. And I'll say uh, hello in uh, Danish. There's no response. I mean, it made them stop for a moment, but I, I don't think they understood what I go said. back to the door and put my ear to it and see if I can hear anything on the other side. The door is too thick. Mm-hmm. Seems to me that uh, we may not have the uh, ability to discuss with them if they actually want to discuss. I'm not a talker. That's <laughs> uh, not really my thing. They don't want to talk. We won't. I mean, if you want to. I'm not willing to open the door. Open the doors and let them in. Well, I don't I, know their intentions. Might, uh, might have a problem with if you wanted to do that. So, so uh, stairs? I. Yes, stairs. So with that, you head to the stairs, and the wood beneath of it seems really soft, like it's been waterlogged for some time. And as you come to the top of the stairs and you see this long hallway, that's when you feel something down below. You feel this, at first this low kind of, you think it's just in your head, it's kind of trembling or tremor. And then you realize you can hear bits of rock and see dust falling from above as the as the as the wall kind of trembles slightly just for a moment and then stops. Hmm. Did you notice that? Yes. Let's keep moving. Don't uh, don't rightly know what could move a house. Know that I want to know. Lead the way. Bartles Beal, hold the torch high. Even your... okay. There's only but a few minutes left in the torch. As you're coming to the far end of the hallway, you can see that there are a series of chambers, three in fact. One to the left, one to the right, and the one before you. But as you look back over your shoulder, you realize that even though the other stairwell had collapsed, you could easily go to the other wing of the chateau as well. You turn back behind yourselves. Check out these these rooms. We need to find some something to replace this torch. Yes, if we don't find oil, I've, I've got a lantern. We could load. To the first chamber you go, and it is covered in cobwebs. Completely choked in cobwebs. Uh, again. Anything else in the room? You want to step inside? Yeah. And cobwebs stretch across your face and arms as you, oh, oh, they're gross. I would use the torch to, to get them out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly, the uh, webs are um, burned up, dribbling like hot wax to the ground. And as quickly as the webs are dispatched and kind of the wind kind of, kind of weaving their kind of singed edges like such, it exposes a room that has been vacated. Into chamber with nothing inside. All right, turn around and open the next door. You 
come to this next chamber, and it is actually completely open. There's no door. It's a larger antechamber, and inside you can see what looks like some sort of studio. But this chamber is a very tall, soaring painting of a man upon an easel. Oil paints, brushes, and the like have dried up, and large canvas blankets cover all the furniture. Uh, the torch about to go out, I'll take out my last one and okay. uh, light it off of that one. The torch sputters and burns brightly and illuminates this cold, steely gaze of an uncaring lord in a purple doublet. He is flanked by knights illustrated in charcoal, a painting that is not yet finished, but without a doubt this was meant to hang somewhere important, but it's unfinished. You can see a hearth that is cold with ash dominating one side of the room. Here you go, here's a new one. Oh, yes. Take it. Take it. Much to see here. Yeah. Art. Eh. Wait, wait, wait. I mean... What? Usually studies like this have a earth in it, don't they? I look around the room and is there... Oh, yes. And uh, you see one actually not far from here. The ash is cold. But it is not only wood that is inside the hearth. You are the first to notice it, Ulf. What's in the hearth? You can tug at this cloth. It looks like a shirt, maybe? Half burnt, half singed? Still somewhat intact. Couldn't be worn. But we have a very rich thread. Okay. I hold it up towards the torch. Take a look at it. Shake the ash up and you realize it is a, a dark bluish purple color. Yeah, well. What what shape is the cloth? Is it just a piece of cloth or is it is It's it meant like to a, be a shirt, like a doublet. Okay. Looks kind of like a, what the man in the picture is wearing. It does. It, they like to color coordinate around here. I don't know what else to make of that. It's almost as if greens and yellows were untoward. You didn't like them? Well, if you, uh, you have all these spiders that are that color. Make a lot of things that are that color. Mm. They, right? I don't know. Uh, see any torches or oil or anything that's been left here? Honestly, I, I. Lovely shirt. Don't care. Anything to make fire. Light. Anything. No oil, no candles, no torches. You have 55 minutes left with that torch until it sputters out. Someone meant, someone meant to burn this shirt for some reason. Not that it really matters to what we're looking for, but uh, just keep that in mind. Alright. Keep the shirt. That, I, I don't know what to tell you. Oh, uh, Ulf tosses it to the, tor to, to the ground. I don't really need it, do we? I suppose if there's nothing else in here, we should move on. I think so. Mm -hmm. Will you open the third and final door? Yes. Yes. Behind door number two. As the door opens, you brace against a cold wind and a bright light that pours through this half crumbled chamber exposed to the valley down below. From here, you can you can see the light coming from a southerly side. You're facing south, I should say, and you're looking down over the village, and you realize that this library has already collapsed and fallen precipitously hundreds of yards below down into the lake. The wind is chilly and cold. It could have arrested you immediately, almost awakening you all for just a mere moment. <laughs> there are half there are, there are waterlogged books. There is a ruined podium. 
and the interior, the exterior wall of this chamber has literally collapsed, exposing the weather outside. There are snowdrifts built up in here. All the books have been destroyed by the forces of nature. Any candles in the library? <laughs> Do you want to walk in? Yes. Carefully. Okay. You begin walking in very slowly. I'm testing each step. You hear this crumbling of rock falling down somewhere below from the room as you all both step in here. You kind of pause for a mere moment. Standing perfectly still. You hear this, this shaking coming from somewhere within Chateau Kilden as the walls begin to shake to tremor and you can see one book slip off the shelf, and then another, and then another. And as this happens, you can see it within the light, this small, rusted iron box on behind some of the books on the shelf, nearest the far edge, where it opens into the wilderness below. How far down is this drop? Hundreds of yards. <laughs> you would fall into the lake and be your doom. Yes. That the big floor it happens to be slanted to. Mm. How big is the box? And how close is it to the edge? Not yay big. About two by two. Or not really two by two, but about, about eight inches by eight inches. Okay. And how close is it to the edge? A few yards. make my way towards the box, testing each step before I put my full weight on it. Okay. <laughs> you will do so. Will anyone go with him? Just me, just me. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> You've got it. <laughs> Alright. And with that, you take your first step. I'll take my time. And you're next. And you're next. <laughs> Make a secret scrutinize <laughs> test. Okay. Uh, looks scrutinize like uh, is a. Is it 50? Uh, looks like he's one step closer to the edge. He's I'm about to burn. Gerald, a 15. The first step feels good. The second step <laughs> to get to the bookshelf. <laughs> Make another secret scrutinized test. Oh, damn, it. damn it. 88. <laughs> <laughs> Critical oh, subject. Oh. You Bye see off. him begin to lean forward. You have a fate point left. Mm, yeah, sure okay. do. Spend it. <laughs> All right. Suddenly, <laughs> grabbing the back of the collar of your of your of your shirt is Partha. As she's standing there out in the middle of the crumbling library along with you, holding on to your collar as you're looking down really hundreds and hundreds of feet into the cold frozen lake that reflects the light from a from a glaring sun. And as you're looking out almost literally within mere inches of falling outward she slowly pulls you back and you can see figures over the lake moving along its edges, shadows of people, but the light is so blinding you can't see who they are. But they're doubtlessly coming towards Chateau Kilden. You now have zero fate points left. I have one. Everyone should have one fate point. Does I have two? Oh, yeah, it's you should two. all have one fate point. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Nine. You snatch the bot quickly, and you scramble back to the edge. Come on, come on, come on! Bartles be able to like hold out his arm and try to assist the pulling them back. You pull them in very quickly. You slam the door shut. What's in the box? Oh, 
the one that grabbed it. I don't know. Well, starts opening it, or attempting to. Collecting yourself for a moment. You place the door, the box down carefully. You realize that it requires a key. You must either pick it open or bust it. Well, I guess I'll try picking it first. I don't really have two. I don't have tools. So I guess that's not an option. Though. I'll bust it open. Okay. Make a trivial athletics test. Okay. If you're not critically failed, that's. Okay, trivial is. Okay, so athletics, that's gonna be Can 70% I assist? San- chance to sure. succeed. You're both prepared to stomp on the box. 44. Nice, crit success. Yeah, it breaks <laughs> open with ease, and inside you find. Well, these diaries. Personal diaries that appear to be been written by a man simply addressed as Alistair, chief geologist. Okay. I'll Whoops. thumb I'll thumb through them and, and look towards the more recent entries. Again, flicking through them, looking for information so you can un- understand. Roll a routine scrutinized test to quickly scan. Okay. 60% chance to succeed. I roll 38. Okay. Success. Well, clearly, it appears to show a very extensive series of caverns below Chateau Kilden. These geomantic structures. And in fact, it seems to point out that clearly that they've been mapping something. It appears to point out where raw sapphire could be found. It's written clearly in Aldish. It's written in the common tongue. Mm-hmm. Vast stores of it, in fact. This is clearly meant to be kept, be kept hidden. I see. Is there any diagram of the of the known um, caverns below? There is. How to get there? There is, and in fact, it seems to connect to a place. Simply addressed as the Sanctuary. Bartlesby, this is it. This is it. This is, it. This is our way out. We're gonna, we're, gonna get, we're gonna get the hell out of this place. There's. We can't go back the way we came. Oh, right. But, there, but there's caverns below. And how do we get to those? It says right here. Okay. Go on. It says right here. Can you read it? Go on. I. Ulf continues to read. Why read when you can be read to? I guarantee you read faster than I can. So. Ulf, Ulf continues to read the. Uh, read aloud uh, the way to get to the, the cavern. Sanctuary. Sanctuary. The san- what, what is this? Is that where we were earlier? Because if so, that's in the town and. Uh, well, what I'm saying is. We've been. We've been chased here. There's, there's been no way back, and this appeared to be a dead end. And now we can, we can find our way out. Let's keep looking. Okay. So we look for the sanctuary. Mm-hmm. So you said there's caverns below. That means we gotta somehow get below. <laughs> well, uh, you go through that door, you'll come below quite easily. You almost did. I. I guess we don't have an option, do we? Let's, uh, let's check the other wing of, of yeah, yeah. Let's of go the to the other side. Perhaps there's a way down. Well, as he's walking, like Bartlesby's gonna head that way. But um, I suppose we now know why they want this place, right? No, I, I, I don't. There's sapphire store, stores below. Oh, right. He, I must have not been paying attention. The, the geologist. Know. That's what the geologist diary says. Stores of precious stones. You know, it's it's interesting, because normally I'd be really interested in that, but I don't care. Well, uh, <laughs> almost dying probably changes priorities. It I does, does it? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it wouldn't hurt to take a few if we stumbled upon them, but... Oh, uh, well, now you're speaking a language, but uh, first let's live. 
Mm-hmm. That seems seems a good plan. Yes. 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 Uh, this way. Bartlesby starts leading the other. You head down the opposite hallway, returning back to the twins of the stairs, one that has collapsed and one that has not, and you pass by that large central pillar, and you can see that it actually seems to depict a world above and a world below. And amid the world below, it seems to show these shiny purple sapphires affixed into the brass fixture of the pillar. But you head down the other hallway, the opposite side of where you're at, and the corridor seems to turn almost like a, almost turn very slowly, 180 degrees, and that's when you see a heavy set of double doors emblazoned with twin engravings and silver and gold of both the martyr and the custodian. But one door is held ajar by the remains of a young squire in poker armor, frozen in terror. With her back pressed against the door, she's dead, and her arm is twisted into the heavy rung of the door over her head, as if she died where she stood. Could this be your sanctuary? <laughs> it, this doesn't look good, but we don't have any other options. No. I'm, I'm no barber or nothing, but uh, still haven't seen a way that any of these people died. Well, wait, the window one, the window, the window one. I think we know, but the rest of them haven't. Uh, Oh, the, the, the blue one. The blue one looked like a sword. But the rest of them, I, I've seen nothing that points out. So how do we defend against nothing? Well, I, I would think that they all died from the cold. This one too. Inside the building. You can see tiny purple spiders crawling beneath of her quilted armor. Oh, no, it's the spiders. All right, well, let's continue. Not much we can do about that. As you approach with the torch, the spiders scurry away. Your gallows humor is unsettling me. If you could please have a heart. I I have one. The unfortunate thing being, I don't know of a way to fix any of this. And uh, this is the only way I can deal. <laughs> so, uh, yes. Continue. All right. Hi. Let's go. <clears throat> we go. We go. Bartles be able like open the door. Try not to touch the corpse as much as possible. Yeah. Probably not possible. <laughs> you open the door. The door opens, it creaks slightly, and you realize you can see light within here. You need no torch, for the light pours through a stained glass window, where you can see a corpse halfway in and halfway out, her metal plate armor casting light within the sanctuary, within a place that has been defiled. Broken candelabras, overturned pews, a shattered altar, all entwined in the webs of spiders. But someone appears to be still alive, softly breathing, their back toward you. A knight clad in armor, you can see the plume on the top of the back of the crown of his helmet kind of moving, not from the wind, but from soft breathing. You hear this harsh Hello? Just the breathing. Shallow and weak. Might be a class because they show away when it takes another step or two in. Clearly, this must be a night of Chauncey Redding. They, their back is laying against the uh, against the stone altar, inquisitively to your back, to your to your front side, so you cannot see them. 
only the back shoulder pauldrons and the, he- the helmet of the plume over the top, the top of the crown of the helmet. Make my way around to see his face. You turn about and you can see that there's this knight clad head to toe munitions plate. You can see that the visor is dropped down, but you can hear his or her heavy breathing within it. You're clad head to toe in mail and in plate. One hand is clasped very tightly around his his neck where he's holding on to a necklace. Sir. Sir. Move up towards him slowly and raise his visor. You lift up the visor and you can see that his eyes have been stitched shut. His entire face is bloated purple from spider bites. And with a dying breath, the hand almost snaps away, snaps away the necklace, holding onto something and drops onto the ground, clasping it with its iron grasp. Is he dead? Was he oh, man. dead already? What? You heard him breathing. What? So he died right at that moment? Yes. What? Does that happen? Is that a thing? Is, is that... We are just too late. By seconds. Sp- by spider bites. I... Uh... He held on long enough for you to break. Give me a hand, if I know. Oh yes, you have anti-venom. He's too, it's too late for him. Um, oh? He's dead he's right dead. now. Um, Alright then. Uh, um, what's in his hand? Wouldn't let it go. Obviously something important. Right? Right? Take, okay. a, take a look. I suppose. Yeah. Do we have another option? You will have to wrench it from his hand and so tightly grasp around it. I don't know. It could be a locket. <laughs> wife's <laughs> hair or something. I don't. Will you pull it forth in that case? Should I? I don't know what to do in this moment. <laughs> Leave this to smarter people. I, I don't see what it could hurt as long as... It... We don't steal from the dead. We can look from the dead. I. Oh, I don't. I'll I'll see what it is. You pry this small cameo from the hand of the knight. You open it and you can see this portrait of a woman with striking blue eyes. And on the other side of the locket that says, To my love, forever. Margaret Coventry. No. <laughs> closes the locket. Here's our proof. Proof. This is Chauncey. Oh. Well, uh, Chauncey's last name was written. What do you make of it then? Is it night? Uh, uh, I look down. down. <laughs> Suddenly, Bartles the... <laughs> wants to stab him in the neck with a spear. As it's, you've got the torch. I have the torch in the chalet way, so I can't. So where's your fire heart and spear? On my back, I guess. No. I would assume I'm not. I don't have them. That's probably right. As this is all happening, you hear the breathing once again, and suddenly the corpse raggedly tries to move and stand up. As you can hear the uh, scrapes of the armor lifting in this wet kind of schlucking sound as the body begins to spill forth with spires from beneath the gorget between the the the, uh, the vents and the visor, underneath the pauldrons and the elbows of this corpse, 
and the body collapses to the ground as all these locust-like chittering kind of happens as hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of spiders spill forth from every crevasse within this armor betwixt the rings and the mail from 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 around the the elbows and the knees and the greaves like these spiders just going to begin to spill forth from it as the body collapses upon the ground you'll ah! all you need to attempt a hard resolve test Jeez. okay 20 15. 35. Failure. 26. Hey. Bartlesby don't care. <laughs> Did you fail as well? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Those who failed suffer uh, six corruption from fear and yeah. another uh, six mental peril. You guys are going to get into this. These <laughs> spiders spill forth everywhere, blanketing the floor. And, of course, Bartlesby, in, 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 in his own kind of second nature, wham! You slam you slam the shillelagh into the helmet. And it goes flying across the ground. Clink, clink, clunk, rolling across the ground. But the spider does not abate the spiders as they're crawling literally everywhere.